Welcome to this uh, fourth lecture, we are in the seventh week. Starting from now, we are going to look at groups of waves, which is why the topic for today's uh, lecture is dispersion of uh, waves. So, let me spend a little while to explain first what is it that is different now compared to what we had been doing. We were looking at still a single oscillation frequency, which was called the normal mode frequency. But in general, that is not the case. Often in real life, the wave phenomena that you tend to encounter does not really come with the single well defined uh, frequency. For example, the white light that we see, for instance, the light that comes from the sun is made of several frequencies. That was the well known experiment that uh, Newton had done more than 300 years back. So, you take a white light of that kind and pass it through a prism and on the other side what you see is it splits into seven colors. The conclusion is that white light is made up of at least seven different frequencies to put it in a very approximate uh, sense. The sound waves that you typically hear are not made up of single frequency. It is often a combination of several uh, frequencies. So, in principle and in practice, we should start looking at waveforms which are made up of several frequencies. A good example of that would be something like a wave pulse, the kind that I have uh, drawn here. So, a pulse is typically something that has a short let us say a uh, time frame, a short time frame like delta t over which the amplitude is sufficiently strong enough. Outside of that small range delta t, its amplitude is nearly 0, so does not even exist. It is like starting a wave pulse in a string for example. The pulse alone can travel. So, such pulses typically are made up of combining many plane waves. Each plane wave has a definite frequency. Each frequency might travel at different speeds, in which case the shape of the pulse that you had started with may not be maintained at later times, because each component is trying to move at different speeds. So, ultimately you will see that what started out as something like this might end up something like this. So, in general a behavior of this kind where sharply peaked pulses finally kind of become evened out, spaced out. It is in general called uh, dispersion. I can give you another analogy. For instance, you imagine that uh, there is a say a marathon uh, race. Now, nowadays, there are many city marathons. So, at the starting point, you have a large number of uh, runners who are starting at the same time. But after some time, if if all of them were exactly running at the same speed, they would all reach the end point precisely at the same time. So, the crowd which started as a group would move together as a group and finally reach the ending point as a group. So, there would not be a distortion in the shape of the crowd. On the other hand, what normally happens is that everyone runs at different speeds. There are people who run very fast tend to be winners and there are others who are slow and just manage to complete it. So, finally, in such a situation you will see that very soon the marathon group that started out actually spaces out. So, we had seen large number of results for what would be called monochromatic waves, waves with single frequency. So, now we are going to see results for what happens if your waveform is made up of many different frequencies. To understand it in a sort of simple uh, framework, let us start by constructing a waveform which has only two frequencies. In that case, it will be easy to understand what to expect and then we can uh, extrapolate the result to larger number of frequencies. Let us assume that I have uh, two waveforms of this type y 1 which is a cos omega 1 t minus 
k 1 x and I have another one which is y 2 again j cos omega t minus k 2 x and in general if you take a 1 and a 2 as two different amplitudes it becomes very hard to uh, do the analysis. So, for simplicity we will uh, take both the amplitudes to be the same. Each of this is a monochromatic wave. So, you will see that y 1 is described by a single angular frequency omega 1 and y 2 is described by a single angular frequency omega 2. Now, if I make a wave which is a superposition of both these waves which means that y will be a function of of course, position and time as usual, but is going to be a superposition of y 1 and y 2. So, it is y 1 plus y 2. So, that would be something like this. The net displacement is simply sum of the displacements of y 1 and y 2. Now, all I need to do is to use this uh, trigonometric formula for cos a plus cos b. So, apply that here and uh, we can rewrite this equation is 2 a times. So, this is simply straightforward. This is the kind of exercise we had done quite some time back when we looked at uh, the beats phenomenon. It is exactly uh, similar as of now. To understand what it says, it is better to plot this. So, I am going to have especially if you assume that omega 1 and omega 2 are nearly equal to one another, but not exactly equal. So, in that case um, this number omega 1 minus omega 2 will be small whereas omega 1 plus omega 2 will be a large number and of course, you can treat this k 1 plus k 2 k 1 plus k 2 by 2 into x as some phase factor. Similarly, you can do that for k 1 minus k 2 by 2 into x. So, what you are going to have is an overall uh, envelope of um, f slower oscillations which might look like this and of course, there is going to be a fast oscillation. something like this. So, here I have plotted y as a function of uh, x of course, is fixed. So, let us just take it as a function of time. Red curve here corresponds to a frequency of omega 1 minus omega 2 by 2. Given that omega 1 and omega 2 are nearly equal, that is a slower uh, of the two frequencies and the faster one which displays fast oscillations is omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 2. When you have a curve like this, you would say that the phase velocity of this curve would be determined by the slower mode. Uh, so, which means that the phase velocity of the slower one would be omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by k 1 minus k 2. So, if I assume that omega 1 by k 1 is equal to some velocity c and omega 2 by k 2 is also equal to c itself. So, here the medium is such that omega 1 by k 1 is equal to omega 2 by k 2 which is equal to c. So, in which case I could write this equation as uh, c into k 1 minus k 2 divided by k 1 minus k 2 and this is equal to c. So, each of the frequency component which in this case is omega 1 and omega 2 they would move together. So, in that case they would maintain whatever the phase relationship that they had at initial time. Now, let us consider the other case. What happens if omega 1 by k 1 is not equal to omega 2 by k 2? So, in that case 
we could define what is called a group velocity and we can indicate it by delta w which implies the difference between the two um, angular frequencies divided by the difference in the wave numbers. Uh, let me call it V g. We have now three possible velocities, one is omega 1 by k 1, other one is omega 2 by k 2 which are the velocities of the individual waves. Now, we added these two waves and that has given rise to this third velocity which is the group velocity V g. In this case what is going to happen is the two waves will not be in step with one another. So, there is going to be a dispersion. So, the initial shape of the wave that you had started with is going to change as a function of time. So, now we can uh, of course, uh, more clearly express this idea of dispersion in terms of what is called a dispersive medium. So, dispersive medium is a medium in which the phase velocities would uh, depend on frequency. If phase velocities depend on frequencies, each component of the wave that makes up the group is going to travel at different speeds. So, it is going to disperse the initial profile that uh, you had started out with. Delta w by delta k in the case where you have large number of such uh, waves superposed together to form a group, this would translate to become d omega by d k. So, once you know omega of k, you could find d omega by d k, find the group velocity and determine if there is going to be a dispersion or not. Typically, when we say energy is carried by the wave, it is carried by the wave with the speed equal to the group velocity. It so happens in some cases that phase velocity is sometimes larger than the velocity of light, but the actual speed with which say a signal can be transmitted or information can be passed on is given by the uh, group velocity. So, given a dispersion relation, we can write an expression for uh, group velocity. So, let us start with uh, V g which is group velocity which is d omega by. Now, notice that omega by k is equal to phase velocity, let me call it V p h. So, I am going to substitute for omega from here in which case I will have d by d k of k into V p h. Now, let us do this uh, differentiation. So, if I differentiate this, I um, will have and now this can also be written in terms of the wavelength, sometimes it is convenient to work with uh, wavelengths, in which case um, one could uh, just make the substitution that k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. So, if k is 2 pi by lambda, d k would be 2 pi multiplied to minus of 1 by lambda square multiplied to d lambda. And if I now substitute for k as 2 pi by lambda, I will get V phase minus 2 pi by lambda into lambda square divided by 2 pi into d V phase divided by d lambda. Now, of course, uh, 2 pi and 2 pi will cancel, this lambda will cancel with one of this. So, I am going to get so, I am going to be left with the final expression which is V group velocity is V phase velocity minus lambda into uh, d V by d lambda, d V phase by d lambda. This is going to be another form of the relation between phase velocity and the group velocity. And we had already seen that uh, we had obtained one another relation between group velocity and phase velocity in terms of 
wave number which is this relation. So based on the relation that I have, I can identify three possibilities. So the first one is when phase velocity is independent of the wavelength. So in other words, dV phase by d lambda is equal to 0. Phase velocity of each of the components that make up the group is exactly same and they would not show any dispersion. So clearly if you put dV phase by d lambda equal to 0 in this relation, you will get that group velocity is equal to phase velocity. Entire group travels with the same speed as any one member of that group. Now the second case could be when dV phase by d lambda is positive, dV phase by d lambda is greater than 0. So you can go back to this equation. Now if dV phase by d lambda is greater than 0 or positive, in that case Vg will be a number that is smaller than phase velocity. So this corresponds to the case when Vg is smaller than phase velocity. So this regime where the group velocity is smaller than the phase velocity is called the normal dispersion. I can consider the case when dV phase divided by d lambda is less than 0. So in this case the group velocity will be larger than the phase velocity. And this is what is uh, called the anomalous dispersion. So I am going to plot omega of k as a function of k. If omega of k is simply equal to k or some constant times k, that is the case when group velocity will be equal to the phase velocity. So that is the case of no dispersion. So in this case, Vg is less than the phase velocity, group velocity less than the phase velocity and this is of course the normal dispersion case. This is of course the case of anomalous diffusion where Vg group velocity is greater than the phase velocity. So you can imagine why it is called anomalous because it looks like the group of waves which make up your pulse or waveform, each of them has a phase velocity which is smaller than the velocity of the group as a whole. That looks quite a unusual situation which is why it has a name called uh, anomalous. dispersion. So what happens to electromagnetic radiation in vacuum? So in this case, the dispersion relation would be omega of k is equal to c times k, where c is the velocity of uh, light. And I need to find out what is the phase velocity. So the phase velocity is of course omega by k and what is the group velocity? So the group velocity is d omega by dk which is equal to c. So you can see that for electromagnetic radiation in vacuum, uh, phase velocity is equal to group velocity and hence there is no dispersion. Let us look at a second example, sound waves at standard temperature and pressure let us say and also in the audible range. So here the dispersion relation is omega of k is equal to gamma p by rho times k. So p is the pressure, rho is the density of the gas and uh, gamma is the ratio of uh, sp specific heat capacities. Now again I can calculate uh, what the phase and the group velocities are. So the phase velocity is simply gamma p by rho 
and group velocity which is d omega by d k would also be equal to root of gamma p by rho. So, again we have a case of v phase velocity is equal to v of group velocity. So, the group velocity is equal to the phase velocity and again there is no dispersion. Now, think about this result for a moment. Suppose there was dispersion in sound waves. So, the medium through which sound wave travels is simply the air around us. Now, if that medium were dispersive to sound waves, what would happen? So, whatever I speak which is made up of many different frequency components would reach you at different times. So, it can be quite uh, confusing. So, the third example is uh, something that we have seen in some detail uh, transverse waves in a continuous string. So, in this case the dispersion relation omega of k is equal to root of t divided by rho times k, t is the tension in the string and rho is the linear density of the string. So, this is the case that we made, we derived results for this case in uh, last uh, 2 weeks. So, now I can uh, ask what is the phase velocity. So, phase velocity is simply root of t by rho. What about the group velocity? That would be d omega by d k which is equal to root t by rho. So, again here is one another case where phase velocity is equal to group velocity. Again there is no dispersion here. So, we saw three different cases where there was uh, no dispersion. So, let us uh, now look at a case where there is actually some dispersion. Electromagnetic waves in ionosphere. In this case the dispersion relation is uh, given by the following relation. So, this is a dispersion relation that is valid in some range of frequencies. So, right now let us not worry about what is the range of validity of this uh, dispersion relation. In some limited range of frequency this is uh, valid. Omega p is the is what is called the plasma frequency. Now, uh, let us differentiate this with respect to um, k and which and we will get the following. Um, 2 omega into d omega by d k will be equal to 2 into c square into k. So, we have sort of um, differentiated with respect to k and now uh, let me make a small um, adjustments here. So, 2 and 2 will cancel. So, I will have omega by k into d omega by d k is equal to c square. And you can see that omega by k is of course, the phase velocity and d omega by d k is the group velocity. So, the product of phase velocity and group velocity is equal to c square. So, let me go back to my uh, dispersion relation which would be omega square is equal to omega p square. Uh, plus k square c square divided by k square throughout. So, I will have omega square by k square is equal to omega p square by k square plus c square. So, here I have an expression for omega by k which is the phase velocity. So, my phase velocity is equal to square root of c square plus some omega p square by k square. So, whatever be the values of omega p square and k square, they are all positive numbers, whatever be that uh, 
this quantity the phase velocity is greater than c greater than the velocity of light okay that looks like it shouldn't have been but this is not the velocity at which with which the signals are transmitted so let's look at the group velocity the so, group velocity would be of course um, c square by the phase velocity so that's what we get from this relation group velocity is c square by uh, phase velocity which can be written as c multiplied by c divided by phase velocity and we just saw that phase velocity is greater than the velocity of light so this term would be less than 1 in which case the group velocity as a whole will be less than velocity of light c so this is an example of um, of a dispersion relation for the case of electromagnetic waves in ionosphere for which the phase velocity is larger than the velocity of light but the group velocity is smaller than the velocity of light since all the signals and information can be transmitted only at the group velocity it doesn't uh, violate uh, any other uh, principles of physics finally i'll uh, leave you with one another um, example so in this case let me give you directly the phase velocity which is given by c into sin k a by 2 divided by uh, k a by 2 ok it is a simple exercise I will leave you to do that uh, the group velocity will be equal to c times cos k a by 2. Okay. So, this is another case in which you do see uh, dispersion as I close let me remind you once again that we looked at dispersion of waves and this is a property of not a single wave but this is a property for a group of waves in a particular medium the key to understanding dispersion whether a particular pulse or a group of waves would be dispersive or not is to know what is its dispersion relation so once we know its dispersion relation we can uh, figure out if it's a case of normal dispersion anomalous dispersion or maybe there is no dispersion at all mm -hmm.